we're going to find the exact components of the vector using the angle shown below. Notice how we're given the magnitude of vector c is 18. We're also assuming the initial point of the vector is at the origin on the coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and sketch the x and y axes. This would be the x-axis, and this would be the y-axis. So notice how the vector is in the second quadrant, where x is negative and y is positive. When we have a vector v with a known magnitude on the coordinate plane and makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, then the vector has an x-component of the magnitude times cosine theta and a y-component of the magnitude times sine theta. We can also say that in our case, vector c would be equal to the magnitude of vector c times the vector with an x-component of cosine theta and a y component of sine theta. So we know the magnitude is 18, but angle theta must be formed with the positive x-axis, so theta is not going to be 60 degrees. The most obvious positive angle for theta would be this angle here, which would be 90 plus 30, or 120 degrees. If we wanted to use a negative angle, we could use this angle here, which would be negative 180 minus 60, or negative 240. Of course, we could also use any coterminal angle. But let's go ahead and use 120 degrees for our angle theta, which means vector c will be equal to the magnitude, which is 18, times the vector with an x component of cosine 120 degrees, comma, the y component would be sine 120 degrees. So notice how here we have 18, the magnitude, times, this would actually be a unit vector, with a direction of 120 degrees from the positive x-axis. Now to find these trig function values, we can use a reference triangle or the unit circle. And we'll go ahead and show both. Notice how if we were to sketch a reference triangle, that would be this triangle here, we'd have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle in the second quadrant, which I've also sketched here. Notice how the 60 degrees is actually the reference angle for the angle that we're using of 120 degrees. But because we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, we know we can label the short leg 1, the hypotenuse 2, and the longer leg, square root 3. But because we're in the second quadrant where x is negative, we would change this 1 to negative 1. And now we can use this reference triangle to find our cosine and sine function values. Cosine at 120 degrees would be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which would be negative 1 divided by 2, or negative 1 half. Sine at 120 degrees would be equal to the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse, which would be square root 3 divided by 2. So this would give us vector c is equal to 18, times the vector with an x component of, again, cosine 120 degrees is equal to negative one-half, and sine 120 degrees is equal to square root three divided by two. And now we'll perform the scalar multiplication, so vector c is equal to the vector with an x component of 18, or 18 over one, times negative one-half, and the y component would be 18 over one times square root of three over two. Now we'll go ahead and simplify. Common factor of two here, one, two, and two, nine twos in 18, and the same here. So we have an x component of nine times negative one, or negative nine, and a y component of nine times square root of three, or nine square root of three. So this would be the component form of the given vector c. And just to show that we could find these trig function values on the unit circle, we can see the angle of 120 degrees would terminate here, where on the unit circle, x is equal to cosine theta and y equals sine theta. So cosine 120 degrees is equal to negative one-half, and sine 120 degrees is equal to square root of three divided by two. The same trig function values we found using our reference triangle. I hope you found this helpful.